So what we've seen here is one of these really big challenges of painting which is we're trying to match this color in our eye, and I think we got pretty close. But someone here said, what about the background? Which, remember, that was the thing my mom told me to worry about. And it turns out that the backgrounds in these two pictures are very, very different. So the picture themselves, I should give credit to the fellow who made the painting. Um, his name is Bo Lotto, and he made both of these pictures. And it turns out, believe it or not, that this patch right here that you all call yellow is physically identical to the patch over there that you all call blue. And yet we clearly mix them with two very different color paints. Wait, wait a minute. Th th this, I know, crazy, eh? This yellow that, mm -hmm. is which blue? It's the same as this blue over here? You got it. No. You, yes, it no, is. No, I seriously don't yeah, believe that. Yeah, no, it is. This is not acting or anything. This is real. Should we? Sh <laughs> Should we try and prove it? Maybe we need another tray with some white. Let's yeah. put this down and give this away and then get another one. No, it's totally true. The background changes it. But the crazy thing is that here the background is not changing it just subtly. It's not like pushing it to be kind of orange to a little bit redder orange. This is pushing it to be two totally opposite colors. So in one case, we're seeing yellow, and in another case, we're seeing blue. And what's even crazier about this is if you think back to what Dr. Knights just said, what hits your eye from that patch and from the blue patch is exactly the same. So your three cone types, they're showing exactly the same activity. So this means that somewhere in our brains downstream of the retina is interpreting that whole scene to give you a completely different color experience under those two circumstances. Your brain is affected by stuff around the color that you're... Exactly. And Show us. Let's so let's, let's do this. So what we're going to do is we're just... We're, the only ones we need is white. We're going to do a backwards painting. We're going to go backwards and paint everything around, in this case, this yellow patch with white. And she's going to do the same thing with the blue. All right, so here we go. So this is like inverse painting, you know, edit, undo. <laughs> How are you doing on that side? Good. So physically, these two things are exactly the same. Wait, let, let me get this over next to that, because I want to be able he to doesn't show believe me. one next to the other. Can you get a shot of both of these squares? Here, really layer it on there. That. Can you go from one square to the other so you can see it in the back? There's one. There's it's the unbelievable, other one. isn't it? Amazing, eh? That's so great. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank Charlotte. you, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a this is one of my favorite classic artist. Does anybody know who this is by, this picture is by? Joseph Albers. So Joseph Albers was an artist who worked about 60 or so years ago at his peak. And in this particular picture, what he's doing is he's painting with exactly the same color paint, a stripe on one side to the other side, but he gets to have it look like two different colors by changing the background. It's amazing that the same physical thing can look two different colors. And I thought, well, there must be some explanation in terms of how the brain works. So in terms of the brain, as Jay Knight said, the retina part of the brain doesn't tell us how this works. So I started to look at, uh, at, at um, early visual cortex, in, in the first stage in the brain that receives retinal signals. And there, I discovered that the neurons, the brain cells that are capable of computing what we call color contrast, this phenomenon is called color induction, where you take one colored surface and you make it look like a different color by putting it on a different background. That calculation is made in the primary visual cortex. And that's really interesting to me as a neuroscientist because it uncovers one of the really important principles of how the brain works which is that the brain works kind of like 
school. You start in grade one, you learn some stuff, and then when you've learned that stuff, you go to grade two, and the grade two stuff you learn is kind of dependent on the stuff you learned in grade one. But the point is that the brain works kind of like that, where you start in the retina, where the retina performs some very important kinds of calculations, like comparing the activity in those three cone types that Jay talked about, and then primary visual cortex gets those signals and says, aha, what I'm going to do with them is compare the amount of them I receive in this part of the visual scene with the amount in this part of the visual scene. And since those two parts could be like the apple and the background, or the stripe and the background, it's then that calculation that becomes critical for the next stage to actually know what color it is that you see.